You still have your beautiful tan. I envy you. You should sit outside and read instead of staying in your room all day. Dr. Coburn says I mustn't get a chill. Well, Coburn is an ass. <laughs> it's supposed to be beautiful tomorrow. Do you good. Take advantage while we still have some nice days. Will you be home late? I don't know. I'm having dinner with Godlin. Don't you have time for lawyers during the day? After dinner, will you be seeing one of your whores? I don't see whores. I'm sorry. Don't be angry. I envy you so. I just get frustrated. I'm so frustrated, Sid. Please don't be angry with me. I'm just jealous of them, Sidney. I want to make you happy the way they do. You want to make me happy? The way they do, yes. I could, you know. I could, Sidney, if you teach me. You have to show me all the things they do, and I'll learn them. Honestly, I will. I find this embarrassing. That's because you're a man. I'm not embarrassed. Well, I'm embarrassed for you. Take me with you. Oh, you can't go out, you know that. You might get a chill. Sydney, wait, please. Uh, Martha, I yell like hell if anybody's ever late for a meeting. I can't start doing it myself. Kiss me goodbye. I don't mean that kind of a kiss. How was that? It's wonderful. Don't wait up for me. Please don't be late, Sydney. Starting to rain again, Martha. Don't get a chill. Goodbye, darling. Come in. It's the last I thought you might like a glass of sherry for dinner. Just put it down. Is there anything else I can do for you, Mrs. Lester? No. Don't you have other matters to attend to? Well, anyway, that's, um, those are the little charities that he was so fond of. Get on with it. I'm not interested in his goddamn charities. Well, <clears throat> you both know most of this. Um, I asked his secretary, Kate Faxon, to be here tonight, but she preferred not to come. Martha, he leaves you one million in trust, plus the house and the furniture and the surrounding lands for as long as you live. And then on to your survivor, which is to say Albert. And Albert, 
Sydney leaves you the sum of one million dollars in trust and whichever of the automobiles you wish to keep. And, <clears throat> now let me see. And? And to my secretary, Kate Faxon, I leave the sum of one hundred thousand dollars. No! I'm sorry, Martha. Is I'm... there any more, Walter? Well, there is one other thing, just one other little thing, and I'm sure it's of no consequence, but um, Sydney had me put a clause in that it's a standard clause. I'm sure it means nothing, but um, if neither one of you should survive him for 30 days, then both of your shares would go to Kate Faxon. Martha. Mother. Mother. Not her! Mother. Not her! Not her! How do you do? How do you do, Mrs. Lasseter? Lieutenant Rossini, I'm sorry about your husband. This is my friend, Mr. Carter. I won't need you anymore, Charles, thank you. If that's all right with you, Mrs. Lasseter. I'll call when I'm ready. Thank you, madam. I won't take up much of your time. This is a little difficult, Mrs. Lasseter. Please excuse me. But can you think of anyone who would want to kill your husband? I can't think of anyone who didn't want to kill him. Including yourself? Especially myself. Uh, you're very frank. I try to be. But you didn't kill him yourself? No, I didn't. I saw most of your plays, Mr. Carter. I enjoyed them very much. I missed the first two. You showed good taste. It's a pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Lassiter. I'm sorry it's under these circumstances. Are you doing research for play, Mr. Carter? Well, he helps me once in a while with my cases. How did you ever hook up with a lieutenant, Mr. Carter? You seem to be very unlikely partners. Well, well actually, he once told me to stick a carrot in my ear. <laughs> I see. <laughs> no, 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 honestly. What was it, five years ago? You might remember. There was a seven-year-old boy in a nearby grammar school. He was stabbed to death when the teacher left the room. It was in all the papers. Yes, I read about it. And I didn't know what the heck to do. I mean, the kids were so scared, they couldn't even talk. And then this famous director, who I had never heard of in my <laughs> life, he calls me up, and he tells me to stick a carrot in my ear. Swear to God, so what the heck? Next day, I walk into the classroom with a carrot sticking in my ear. The kids all start laughing. Next thing you know, you can't get them to stop talking. <laughs> and was it murder? Well, now, that's the tough one. In a tragic way, yes. See, the kids were playing pirates, and this one little boy, well, he got the teacher's letter opener, and he used it for a sword. Now, he didn't mean to kill anyone, not in real life, but, you see, this was make-believe, and he just got carried away. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I can understand that. May I ask you something, Mr. Carter? Of course. What does a director do? Good one or a bad one? A good one, like yourself. Thank you. Well, I can tell you what I do. I just try to turn psychology into behavior. Now that you're going to have to explain to me. All right, well, let's suppose that you are going to be interrogated by the police because you are under suspicion of having murdered your husband. All right, let's suppose that. What would I do? Well, I think that you'd find a wheelchair from someplace and have Charles push you into the room. That way everyone might think that you were the poor helpless victim instead of a murderer, possible murderer. That would be very smart of me, don't you think? Oh, yes. That would be smart. And there wouldn't be any way you could tell if I was faking it or telling the truth. Oh, oh yes. Yes, there would be. How? Well, if you used a wheelchair very often, your legs would be thin like sticks. Yours are pretty firm. And quite beautiful. <laughs> and if you needed a wheelchair, there probably wouldn't be little scuff marks on the soles of your shoes. But the real test would be if I could get you to shake hands with me. Then we'd know for sure, because 
If you really used a wheelchair, I'd feel calluses on your hand right here. But if you were lying, both your hands would be smooth as silk. Like yours. So that's directing. Well, then there's voice and speech and movement and things like that, but knowing if someone's lying or telling the truth, that's the main part. You're a very good director, Mr. Carter. Thank you. Thank you. Will you need me any more today, Lieutenant? I'm a little tired. No, that'll be fine, thank you. and bar mitzvahs too? Come in. Good morning, my sweet. Don't you ever be so impertinent to me. Well, I'm shocked. I thought we had a rather special relationship. Get out of here. Oh, you don't need me now. I don't ever need you. You did once. You swine. I think you might need me again after you read this. A darling boy, full of surprises, eh? Now, I could care less about Albert's sexual preferences, but as the new president of Lester Locke Company, it might prove difficult for him. Martha, it's a copy. There's no point in paying you anything. You'll just come back for more. No, no, Martha. So you're wrong. I'm not some cheap crook. I'm an expensive crook. But I'm honest. You give me that diamond ring you're wearing. I'll give you the original letter. And by this time, tomorrow, I'll be in a different part of the country. Scouts honor. What do you say? If you come back, I'll call the police, no matter what the consequences. That's a promise. I never come back. I want you out of this house. Yes, madam. Is there be anything else? No. Thank you very much, madam. shouldn't mix those, dear. You know better. You think you'll put hair on my chest? Now, don't you be so smart. You know what happened the last time? Yes, ma'am. I'm coming back to check on you in 15 minutes. Have a nice night, Charles. Thank you, Mary. 